There are two main types of electricity that you'll often run into when you're working with electrical circuits. DC, or direct current, and AC, or alternating current. A source that is DC will ideally maintain a voltage that's constant with respect to time. It won't change. An AC source, on the other hand, will present a voltage waveform that's periodic. The current will move in one direction in a wire for a certain period of time, and then the current will reverse and move in the opposite direction for a certain period of time, and then the process will repeat periodically. A source where either the current or the voltage is changing periodically is an AC source. The circuit symbol for a DC source typically has a little plus and minus sign on it, and the circuit symbol for an AC source typically has a little wavy line on it. The little wavy line is sinusoidal, and it represents the fact that typically AC voltages that we encounter in our daily lives are sinusoidal. For example, the voltages that come out of the wall on all the electrical outlets here in this lab are AC at an RMS voltage of 230 volts. If you live in North America or Japan, then the RMS voltage is closer to 110 or 120 volts. We'll get to the definition of RMS voltage a little bit later in another video, but for now, you can just remember that the voltage for an AC source is going to swing positive and negative, positive and negative periodically, but the voltage coming out of a DC source, like a battery, is ideally constant. Are all sources, though, either AC or DC? Are there some sources that are neither AC nor DC? Well, that's what we're going to look at here with some examples. Let's say that we have a source with a particular voltage coming out of that source, where the voltage is given by the following equations. I've not indicated yet on the source whether or not it's AC or DC, because that's what we're going to find out. For each of these sources, let's see if it's periodic or not. Well, one way to tell if a source is periodic or not is to graph it. Source A is sinusoidal with an amplitude of 2. After a certain period of time, the voltage swings down to minus 2. This is a clear example of a source that's AC. It's periodic because it repeats. It's also periodic because I can express it in terms of sine waves. If you've ever had a class in Fourier analysis, you might recall that any periodic wave can be expressed as, in general, an infinite sum of sinusoids. If you see a source that's expressed as a sum of sine waves, then you can be sure, conversely, that that source is periodic. It's then considered to be an AC source. Let's move on to example B. Example B is a cosine rather than a sine, but it has the same amplitude. It's just phase shifted by 90 degrees, or rather, it's phase shifted by a certain period of time relative to the source in part A, but it's still periodic. This is an AC source. You might have noticed that in both sources A and B, there's an omega here next to the time t. Omega is the angular frequency measured in radians per second. The angular frequency omega can be expressed in terms of the frequency given in hertz by the formula omega equals 2 pi f. The period in terms of the time over which a periodic signal repeats is called the period. We often use the symbol tau to refer to the period. The period, measured in seconds, is the reciprocal of the frequency, which is measured in hertz. So a signal that has a higher frequency will then have a shorter period. The only difference between source C and source B is that I've specified the frequency. Let's find the period while we're at it here with source C. We can first find that the frequency equals 1 over pi, and then we can convert that into the period. We conclude that for source C, the period is 3.14 seconds. Source D is very similar to source A, except that we've expressed the period. The period is the same as it was for source C, except the waveform is going to be shifted. Let's change our graph to reflect that. The amplitude of this sine wave is 4, which means that this voltage swings up to positive 4 volts for a while, and then it swings back down to minus 4 volts, and then this process repeats every period. The period, again, is 3.14 seconds, just as it was for source C. It's an AC source because the signal is periodic. Source E doesn't change with respect to time. The voltage is just 200 all the time. There's no period. There's no frequency. This voltage is constant. Therefore, this is an example of a DC source. In F, we have a minus sign, and you might recall that if a voltage is negative, it just means that current will flow in the opposite direction through a wire than it would if the voltage were positive. How's the waveform going to look here? 
Practically speaking, it's going to be very similar to the voltage source of A. The only difference is that whereas in A, the voltage source swings up at time t equals zero, in source F, it's going to swing down. The amplitudes, however, are the same in both cases. It's going to swing down to minus two volts, and then it's going to swing up to positive two volts. There's just a 180 degree phase shift between source F and source A. Clearly, this is an AC source, but what about source G? It has a DC component and an AC component. What would this look like if we graphed it out? Let's first graph just the AC component, and we'll imagine that that one is just a zero. The amplitude is two, so this signal is going to swing up to positive two volts and then down to minus two volts. But that would be the case if I didn't add one to it. If I add one everywhere along this graph, then it's going to shift up to plus three, and it's only going to swing down to minus one. The amplitude is still two volts, but this source has a DC offset of plus one volt. Therefore, this is not exactly an AC source, but it's not a DC source either. This source has both AC and DC components in it. What about source H? There's no sine wave. Is it still an AC source or is this something else? The definition of the function here tells us that the voltage is going to be one volt for a half second every one second, zero otherwise. This is a periodic signal. It repeats, so it definitely has an AC component. But does this source also have a DC component? Well, yes, it does, and I can tell that it does because the average is not zero. A pure AC source will always have an average voltage of zero, but clearly this source always spends its time at voltages greater than zero, so the average is going to be some number greater than zero. In this case, the average voltage is a half a volt. The period of this signal is one second. That's the time it takes for the signal to become periodic, or the time it takes the signal to start repeating itself. It's not half a second. The ratio of the amount of time that this source is on relative to the period is called the duty cycle. The duty cycle of this source is 50%. If it were only going to be on hypothetically for say a quarter of a second rather than a half second, then the duty cycle would be 25% because it would be on only 25% of every period. In this case, it's 50%. Because this source has an average voltage, I know that it has a DC component, but yet because it's periodic, I know that it has an AC component as well. Therefore, again, we have an example of a mixed source here. What about voltage source I? This is a strange one. At times t equals zero, the voltage is one volt. As the time increases though, the voltage is also going to increase, but there's no bound. There's no periodicity in the signal. The voltage just keeps going up and up and up. This is an example of an unphysical source. It's impossible to build a voltage source where the voltage just keeps going up without limit as a function of time. This source is neither AC nor DC. It doesn't have a constant average, which would be the case of a DC source, and it's not periodic, which would be the case of an AC source. Source J, on the other hand, has a negative sign in the exponent. That means at time t equals zero, it's still going to be one volt, but as t increases, the voltage is going to go down rather than up. This source is physically allowable because the voltage doesn't increase without bound, but again, this is neither an AC nor a DC source because it doesn't have exactly a constant offset with respect to time, and it's also not periodic. What I hope you've come to understand from this video is the difference between AC sources, DC sources, and sources that are neither AC nor DC. In the next sequence of videos, we're going to look at AC sources in great detail, and we're going to pay particular attention to those AC sources which are purely sinusoidal. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.